James has a bunch of books to review here. Yeah. Lots, lots and lots. Bring anything out. I want to hold on to this. Oh. Uh, it got some brown on it. <laughs> okay. Well, hang on to the rest of them. This is the lightest one. It's a bit breezy. It's a bit breezy. So. Let's, go one right. Let's go down. Let's go down. If it takes a 400 page book, 402 pages, then, uh, then I'll be okay. Well, it's not bad, you know, for the beginning of December. Well, it's uh, December 8th. Something like that. So it's more than well, it's uh, yeah, more than a quarter into uh, That's uh, I don't know what they're saying. What's what they predicted? So, what's what they were predicting? That's what they were predicting. But I think they were saying a great. Okay. Well, go ahead. Anyway, okay. So uh, we've got a couple of bits of kami uh, done. So a couple Karl Marx stuff. Yeah, exactly. So here we've got uh, 1846, original publication date. The German ideology. And then uh, we've got uh, class struggles in France. And this one's dates to 1873. So this would be uh, after... Um, French Revolution, as they call it, 1870, 1870, and uh, things like that. So, uh, you know, it doesn't go back. They, they should have looked at the Jacobins in the French Revolution, the first one, and uh, maybe should have looked at the uh, French Revolution, 1830. But they start with 1848, so this is, uh, well, I, he does, Carbons. but, uh, And actually, he, uh, it's in the wake of the Revolution of 1870, but, uh, but he just goes through 1848 to 1850. So, uh, you know, there are other places in Europe uh, that had revolutions at the same time, attempted revolutions, none of them successful, even remotely successful. In France, they... Uh, supposed to be kind of like a democratic leader, but I believe it was 1851, about three years later, he uh, made himself emperor. And he was such an idiot, he tried to make himself emperor of Mexico. He had a cat's paw called Maximilian. Uh, tried to take over. The Americans didn't, weren't terribly impressed. Uh, you know, Napoleon was still holding one part of the uh, The third. Uh, I should have consulted the Monroe Doctrine or something like that. The Americans had said in that doctrine, basically, uh, they weren't going to put up with any European colonial powers messing around the New World. And, uh, uh, yeah, and this Napoleon III, I said Bonaparte, this is Napoleon III. He, uh, Germany. Next thing you know, the Germans are in Paris. Yeah, the French were in Berlin. The Germans were in Paris. Yeah, and imposing democracy on the. Uh, I understand the Germans weren't into democracy back then. 
really haven't been into democracy since about 1951, but uh, that's 1951, 1951. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, but they imposed it on the French, and that democracy lasted until they started collaborating with the Nazis in uh, the wake of the invasion of So the German ideology is uh, a bit more interesting, you know, like uh, it's it's kind of in their formative period, uh, so um, uh, it is, so yeah, it's both of the, the these two buddies, uh, Marx and Engels, on this one. And uh, this is just part one, the German ideology. And they're dealing with uh, Feuerbach, and uh, that means fire. Bro, isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? Uh, or fire back, which is another English word. It's maybe close to being cognitive, but. But uh, then, so that's the first part of German ideology. So Feuerbach is kind of like uh, the main connection, I'd say, although there could be others, between Hegel, an idealist, and Marx, who was at least claimed to be a So he said he turned Hegel famously, or infamously. Claimed he turned Marx on his head, or Hegel on his head. So Hegel was an idiot, uh, was an idealist, and he claimed to turn Marx on his head. So I think one time Marx said something like, now philosophers have uh, been interested in describing history or reality, and it's uh, it's my job, our job, to change it, to change reality. I can't remember exactly what it is. It's probably not reality. So it's kind of like a direct action. And then they've got selections from the remaining parts of uh, German ideology. Uh, and uh, it's just a small selection. Then they have uh, supplementary text, uh, theses on Feuerbach. Uh, so uh, they, I think Marx and Engels were saying that they, uh, at this point in time, well, I think they were saying they were basically communists about this point in time, 1845-1846. Communist Manifesto, I believe, was 1848, something like that. Uh, contemporary with these revolutions that shook uh, Western Europe. I think even uh, Hungary, so you'd have to say something like Eastern or Southeastern Europe and uh, stuff like that. So these are put out by New World Paperback. So they were, uh, yeah. So uh, do they have the, yeah, they have international publishers. It says New York, but <laughs> that was just by way of New York. For this stuff would come, uh, the impetus for it would come. That's what they would have come from Moscow. So they've got a rather horrible uh, little insignia that looks like uh, a communist statue. They, they look like a monumental. This is awfully small. But yeah, they published a lot of stuff and probably uh, subsidized. I remember I used to go a little bit to the commie bookstore in Toronto. Where was that? Uh, was it something like Harcourt Street? I can't remember. Anyway, I don't think it was Queen Street uh, West or anything like that, but uh, I used to go to it because they subsidize uh, like uh, buying Bibles from the Canadian Bible Society. It used to be those things were subsidized or getting hold of Mormon, I can't say Bibles, but they're equivalent of uh, the Book of Mormon and uh, another testament of Jesus Christ as they subtitled Okay. I know it, and I actually do care. Anyway, a lot of people would know it. Mormonism, Mormonism is huge. But, yeah, but non mormons is actually not that huge. It's huge around here. Anyway, yeah. anyway, it's a movement. I'm willing to bet my uh, uh, the uh, I know claims that he knows more about uh, Islam than I do, as taught Mormons. I wonder if he knows more about uh, Mormonism than I do. Oh, I'm sure he does, at least in his own mind. Anyway, um, yeah, so uh, they published a lot of different stuff. Uh, most of this junk I've read one way or another. And, like, uh, I don't think they published, uh, it might have been selections from the last time. Ah, 
stuff like that. Do these come recommended? I advise you to read as much of Marx and Engels as possible, uh, you know, whether or not you're a Marxist. And uh, if you're especially reminded of uh, the Marxists that I knew quite well back in the day, and uh, oh, the Marxist ladies are communists, okay, so this was in the 80s. And, uh, you know, like, uh, I went through, we had a club, and uh, we brought some of our books along. I, there's no way it could have uh, fit. We rented a, a loft, actually, downtown. Right? And um, we brought some of our books. Uh, I think uh, the other two people, the main people in the club, uh, brought pretty well all they had. But uh, there's no way I could fit all my books in there. Big, big but uh, yeah, so you know, I went through his da Das Kapital, and it, you know, like when I opened it up, I'm, you know what that means. It, every time I open it up, it never so and you know, I understand. It, since then, I've gone through a little bit of even in you know. But uh, my copy of Das Kapital, it's, it just it just falls over. But his copy. Okay, so he was the communist, and I was the one who was the skeptic. Now I'm cynical after 1991. So this was in the mid to late 80s, so you know, it's just falling apart. Well, yeah, it's basically falling apart. Right now. So, uh, but he did have a comic book version of. Uh, Marxism or Marx or something like that, you know, so it, it had comic book things. It's actually quite entertaining, but I am telling you, you think I get the, the, this part of the book, the book's dirty, he had, he had, he had, he didn't seem to wash his hands much, and he smoked, he's incredible, his hands were just all bad. Anyway, it was just like thumbed, and, you know, yeah, just almost like disgusting looking. Dirty. So that's what what I was getting from him was a comic book version of Marxism. So don't, don't, please don't, at least if you're going to yip and yap and jibber and jabber to me about communism and any a number of other belief systems and religions and multiculturalism and literary criticism and cultural criticism and critical race theory and all this kind of garbage, do not give me the comic book version. I'm going to say please, but I feel like I'm saying please, because that's my nature. But you damn well better do it, because I'm tired of saying please to you bozos. Okay? So, this this stuff is all required reading. If you're going to be yipping and yapping. If you're not going to be yipping and yapping, uh, you know, like, uh, it's not required reading. Something like uh, the Communist Manifesto, I think, would be a required reading for everyone. But, uh, there we go. Now, what, oh yeah, here we go. By Nicholas Berdyayev. I don't know if I'm putting the accent in the proper place, but that's a tough, that's a mouthful, eh? Look at that, Berdyayev. The Russian Revolution. The Russian Revolution. It's not very thick. It's not very thick. That's the one that got blown away by the wind. Yeah. It's all red, but uh, it's kind of like these things should have been done in red, the comic color. But uh, this guy is a Christian, right? Communism writes the philosopher Nicholas Berdyayev, and if I'm mispronouncing it, all you Russian folk out there, I apologize, and all you philosophers and stuff. It's more than a political movement. It has become a new religion, replacing the Christianity of Holy Russia with a fanatical cult of Lenin. So it's talking about Lenin. It's before the real cult of personality of Stalin uh, came to the right cult of Lenin. Uh, we, through Berdyaev's work, we see how the proletariat becomes the chosen people. Not really. The chosen people are is the Communist Party. It's the intelligentsia. So he gets that wrong. But I mean, this is only like 14 years after the revolution. And capitalistic exploitation, the original sin. The original sin is actually being white. But uh, for uh, the latter-day ones, but back then, and it still is, 
Uh, capitalist exploitation is the original sin. It's the thing that started uh, sexism, according to flunkies nowadays. It's the thing that started uh, exploitation. Somehow or another, it's related to slavery. And, uh, you know, like you'll find uh, records of slavery. Uh, this is outside of the Bible. Yeah, going back to the Old Kingdom in Egypt. The Old Kingdom, when did they date it? Uh, we'll say roughly, and at uh, roughly 2000 BC, according to the Egypt So how did capitalists start slavery? Uh, okay. At any rate, uh, yeah, it, so he's got that right about the original sin. And the cult of Lenin, fanatical, it is fanatical. Now, I don't know if he emphasizes it's, uh, you know, like I just finished it up. I uh, finished almost all of it or the night before. And, uh, you know, you look at the icon, uh, cult of personality, they used to have big pictures of Lenin and Marx. Some kind of angles in uh, He didn't look quite as uh, scruffy as uh, Marx and stuff like that. You, if you see uh, old pictures from uh, the Soviet Union, you'll see this. This is guy, oh, that must be Engels. The guy that you don't, everyone recognizes Marx with that big bushy beard from it stuff growing at any rate uh, mushrooms or whatever but uh, you know and then Stalin ultimately that stuff got uh, Captain Khrushchev uh, at least after the expose of Stalin in 1956 the so called secret speech uh, then uh, I don't think it was uh, kosher to have pictures of Stalin like, like peeking, peering over your shoulder like big brother with a big big bushy mustache um, I'll have to finish up uh, something I started, restarted I should say, I, I finished up in 74, uh, 1974, it's not 1974. Um, although I, I'm sure a lot of people uh, out there think my views are really, really old fashioned, they're not actually, they're new fashioned. The, uh, the, the thing is, you know, like, I'm against capitalism, I'm against uh, communism, I'm against Nazism, I'm against uh, multiculturalism, the way it's been formulated, where it doesn't include the culture of whites, uh, males, um, uh, healthy, uh, fit, uh, stuff like that. It doesn't include capitalism. Cap guess what? Capitalism is a culture. What? Yeah, it is a culture. But, uh, oxymoron, get that straight. So I don't want to to be confused with people who can't help it. Yeah. Oxymoron, what is that? Sharp, dull. Moron is basically for dull. And it's an oxymoron itself. Oxymoron, sharp, dull. You guys, you gal, think you're sharp? You go. At any rate, uh, so, yeah, this guy basically uh, nails it. I think he could have emphasized more the, uh, he uh, he's accusing the Russians of indul indulging in idolatry and he's a Christian so it's a bit hypocritical but uh, you know in some ways the superstition of uh, communism is even more superstitious than Christianity the belief in some sort of afterlife uh, paradise on earth that could be brought to you by these bosoms yeah that's never going to happen never going to fly I don't know about heaven after earth or hell after earth. probably not The red and the black, eh? Le rouge et le noir! So we're dealing with a lot of... Uh, uh, this guy's a... Uh, this is a novel. And it was written by a guy called Henri Bea. Oh, excuse my mispronunciation. But he went by the name of something like Stendhal. And uh, when he was publishing books. And he was a bit of a... Well, a revolutionary who identified... So this book, I think, was written somewhere uh, just before 1830. Let me just see. 1827, I've got here. So I, I, I kind of introduction uh, and uh, stuff like that. But uh, not much about it. Anyway, maybe that's why I had trouble finding out.
at any rate, uh, this is a, uh, uh, you know, like, I read all the introductory stuff, and, so on and, so forth, and then I slugged through so on. I, I finished it up, and I'm going, man, I hate that. I hate him, hate him, hate him. It's horrible. And it made it hard to read. Do you ever find out, like, if you're watching a movie and the uh, first a hero is really a hero or whatever? Uh, is it, and it's given away. I mean, this is a, apparently based on something that really happened. I don't yeah, know how much I'm it's I'm reading realistic. right now, mm. I can't identify with it. Yeah, yeah. So I found it's it a cool. hard slug. Yeah. Uh, and stuff like that. You have ten minutes. So this is a priest who's a revolutionary. Yeah. And uh, so he's a hypocrite, right? So he's uh, what is he, a priest? Something like that. Anyway, he uh, goes in training in a seminary and he learns how to memorize huge passages of the Bible. He impresses the uh, many people in the church hierarchy and in the nobility as well. So he gets in a position where he's tutoring kids and then uh, for a noble family and the wife is a lot younger than the husband and he's a hypocrite so he ends up yeah. And, so. yeah. and it's just, I'm going, I cannot, I, the guy's a scumbag, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, uh, and then uh, later on he, uh, he leaves that, well he gets discovered that he makes pizza he's still and then he gets hold of a 17, 18 year old girl, something like that. He gets in another rich family, right? And she's pretending that she's put off by it. But he hangs around in the library and she always makes excuses to come to the library, right? And so he's got a, a friend who tells him how to deal with women. It's just like, is to kind of put him off, put him off, put him off, right? So he does it, does it, does it. Gets the woman um, totally infatuated with him. He ends up getting her pregnant. It goes beyond infatuation. And uh, the, her dad, he's thinking of her as a big milch cow, right? She's another aristocrat, right? And uh, But she wants to marry this lonely uh, flunk, right? Yeah. That's around Grenoble, I think. I think this guy came from And uh, so... Uh, he ends up, what happens? He ends up being exposed, I think, by his former love, right? But she ends up regretting it, and more than one way, because he ends up shooting. Now, it's based on a real story. So, probably what was in the newspapers is just shot as former love, right? Stuff like that. So, it, all the nasty stuff that you see, you say, it's disgusting, you know? It comes out. And he ends up, uh, you know, they're saying, hey, you know, like you can use the, your influence and serious defense to get a, to get a, you, you, all you say is you plead insanity. It looks as though they had something like that. This is like almost. Yeah. But, so it's a novel based on a true story then. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I, I, they wouldn't have been as much as these guys. Yeah. Kind I of like, it. In, 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 sure. So I gotta say, this guy did a good job. It was a hard read, especially it's French and it's got some stuff that would be old words oh, and lots of literary words and things like that. So it's a tough slog. It got better as it went along. And so, of course, uh, I take it in huger and huger chunks you know, and stuff like that. So I ended up reading it in a very rush, you know, like uh, I, know I, had, I had no idea if it come down and hung out. Wow, that's, that's crazy. Anyway, uh, so this guy was kind of like a revolutionary. We kind of uh, stick with that. Highly recommended, especially in the original. And it doesn't matter if you're French or English. Here in Canada, I didn't say French is a foreign language. Sometimes I catch myself thinking that, but it isn't, you know, a bilingual country, and uh, we really shouldn't be bilingual out here. All we are is bilingual in uh, the National Park of Water. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm embarrassed that I can't speak French, but at least I can read it pretty well, and I'm trying. Speaking it, uh, like, uh, like, 
then uh, here we go. This is something I gave a preview to. Uh, I yeah. gave. Well, that's foolish. But he's having trouble, right? Of course he's having trouble. That's the uh, trailer Why? that came through here. <laughs> Why wow. take okay. it? Hopefully he doesn't take the tree out. The tree was put there on the corner to keep people from knocking it on stuff. Yeah. The house Marlene's is right on the corner. Marlene's son had planted it, well, I guess, when he was little. Yeah, yeah. So the people across the way used to own it. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So she's uh, noticing it. She's, she's noticing now yeah. that they're having trouble turning. Yeah. And they shouldn't have been turning that way. Have. If they come down here, they, there's a way they can show a little bit and go relatively slow. But uh, they're idiots. You know, my I used to drive a trailer. My my foreman used to tell me, don't even take the truck up an alley. Okay, much less a trailer. Well, you have three minutes. There we go. So he, I gave a, a warning that I'd be finishing this up, and you fools out there that uh, are skeptical about me or cynical, I finished it up, and it's in the original Dutch. Sure, it's only Agatha Christie. Agatha Christie. I think this is the uh, seven and twentieth. So the twenty seventh, Feifling. I think uh, Feifling is. Uh, I'm just. Okay, I'll help him out. Yeah, I don't want him hitting the house. Yeah, 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 exactly right. So, uh, tune in next time, okay? Hopefully you won't hear me cussing at this guy. I don't think I will, because I don't want to get him out of the road.